Last but not least, you know what time it is. It's rapid reaction. Whole lot of topics. A little bit of time. The floor is yours, Jay. All right. During an ESPN interview this week, Hall of Fame Dolphins quarterback Dan Marino said he hopes Bill Belichick is unable to surpass the career wins mark set by his old coach, the late Don Shula. What do you think of Marino's comments? Uh, you know, loyalty over money, baby. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Listen, we, we know that Dan Marino and Don Shula legacies are kind of tied together because what they, they built down in Miami. So I'm not surprised that he said that. I mean, what, you know, what, what was he going to say? Hey, Bill, go blow old Don record out the water. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I respect that. I, I get what Don, I, what, what, what Marino's saying. And listen, everybody that's from that era of Miami probably feels the same way about any record that they still hold. Don't break it. This is the only thing we living on. We got to live on this time. Don't do it. So I, I, I can dig it. I, I, I got what Dan Marino going with that. The NFL plans to halt the use of race norming in a $1 billion suit of brain injury claims and review past scores for race bias. The binomial race... Ah, damn, I messed that up. The binomial race norms, when used, assume that black patients start with a lower cognitive function than other patients. Oh, that's, that's quite a mouthful. Are you glad... <laughs> are you glad race norming is being phased out of the NFL? I, I'm so glad that you brought this to my attention. I had no idea what this was. Um, and, you know, I, I try to be objective. And, like, I know, you know, I've said, I think we started earlier in this show. There's a lot of things that, like, you know, it seems like we live in a society today where every, just about everything is racist. Um, I don't know. How, I don't, I'd like to know how this stood for so long. This is the definition of racism. The like belief that, you know, one one group of people um has less brain function because of the co the, the color that they are. You know, I my you know, I think we got a duty to call balls and strikes. Um I'm going to you know you know I'm going to call it like it is uh you know, either way. Um th this is racism. And good good for them for getting rid of it, but uh I guess it took the you know, it took a year of social justice and like, oh, we do we do race norming? How is that norm? What? How did that become the norm? I'd like to know. Florida football coach Dan Mullen has received a three year contract <laughs> extension that keeps him in Gainesville until 2026. And his new salary will be seven point six million dollars. And that's the hot fifth highest in the sport. Have you seen enough from Mullen to like this extension? Yeah, but I, I don't think he's going to three year. Listen, I, I would be surprised if Mullins is there in the next two. He probably coached this season, and I, I think he gone to the NFL this season after. I, I, if he gets anything out of this Florida team that lost so much talent last year, and they're competitive, and they don't got to even win the East because it should be Georgia's to win. But if he makes them competitive, and they look good, and he whispers to another quarterback, he is out of here, folks. So, I, I mean, listen, I, to answer your question, yes, I've seen enough, but I just don't think he's going to work through this extension. I think he'll be in the NFL very, very soon. Packers coach Matt LaFleur does not know if quarterback Aaron Rodgers will show up for next week's mandatory minicamp. And second-year quarterback Jordan Love is currently taking the first-team reps. Do you see Rodgers showing up next week? He ain't showing up unless Gunnikins get on the phone and bring in Julio Jones quick, fast, and in a hurry. But I don't <laughs> see that happening. No, he, he, won't, he won't be that next week. This is going to drag on for a while. Duke men's basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski will retire after the 2021-22 season after 41 seasons and five national titles. What are your thoughts on this drink, on this new hey, drink? I would say this, man. I don't know if it's coronavirus or what, but we see a lot of legends make, tipping on out, making their way up out of here. Um, and maybe it's because of the conditions, but I would say this. Listen, and I told you this um, before the show. You know, God bless the guy that replaced Mike Krzyzewski. Um, When you got a guy that was a pillar of a program for 41 seasons, like, think about this. This program hasn't had to find a coach for 41 seasons. Five national championships. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be hard on the guy to replace him. But, hey, every, every good thing must come to an end at some point, and this is it for Duke basketball right now. Um, they're going to take a hiatus, but, you know, well-deserved, well-deserved. And not to mention just the Duke basketball, 
We got to remember, he was also the coach of men's basketball that won a gold medal and won a couple of other medals. So you got to put a little respect on him for that as well. On Tuesday, the St. Louis Cardinals placed ace right-hander Jack Flannerin on 10-day IL with a left oblique strain. Big deal, little deal, or no deal. Oh, that's a big deal. The guy's 8-1 and one, uh, so far with an ERA under three, six, seven strikeouts. I mean, that's a... That's a Cy Young pace. Cardinals are uh, in the thick of the uh, NL Central race. Um, you know, if he's if he's only out for ten days and misses two starts, you know, I think they I think they can get by with that. But uh, if this turned into a, a real issue where he has to be out longer, uh, could be a, could could very well be a you know a huge deal uh, for them because he's the ace of their staff and is having an absolutely fantastic season. Today, the rules for the uh, Floyd Mayweather and Jake Paul fight were released. Uh, we're we're gonna have no judges. No official uh, winner read out. Knockouts are legal up to the referee discretion. It's going to be no headgear. We got 12 ounce gloves and eight three minute rounds. Drink. Is this a fight or is this something else? Listen, if it wasn't for the fact that they're going to allow knockouts, I would be like, no, this is not a fight. I don't know what this is. This is more like a hopscotch <laughs> tournament or something like with boxing gloves. Um, however, the fact that they will get to knock each other out and it's up to the, the referee discretion, that makes it a fight. Um, it's not going to be anything official, so Floyd don't have to worry about his 50-0 record getting blemished. But he do, he still will be in the, the court of public opinion, so he go and let you know Logan Powell gas him up a little bit and he look bad, our eyes going to see what we're going to see. So just let him know that. Um, but it won't be official. Um, but I still should be entertaining. They're, they're not going to have on um, headgear, 12-ounce gloves. I like that. That's going to make power work. Um, and then the eight three-minute rounds, is, you know, yeah, I, can, I can live with it. I think it's going to be a, a good exhibition because that's what it is. So we'll, we'll see how that go. After three seasons into a five-year deal over $47 million, 49ers center Weston Richburg has announced his retirement from the NFL. Did this surprise you? You know, initially it did, but, um, you know, he's had some real injury uh, troubles lately. I think there was a, I think 2019, he missed 12 games with a concussion. And uh, we just live in a day and age where, you know, we've seen NFL players hanging up a little early. And um, I think just because all the research been, has been done and guys just being more conscious of the risks of going out there and, you know, subjecting your body to, you know, just punishment over and over, especially in the trenches. I mean, this guy's a center, so, you know, he's getting knocked around repeatedly so um initially surprised but uh you know after you take a step back and take a look um it it's not it's not that surprising at all uh, zero nba players tested positive for coronavirus out of 278 tests since may 26 and that's consecutive weeks where there where the nba has had zero positive results that's according to shams sharania great news right Nuri? yeah listen um in this time Anytime you, you hear something like this, uh, two consecutive weeks, no positive tests, we're doing something right. At the end of the day, no matter how you feel about the NBA, no matter how you feel about COVID, no matter how you feel about the guy that reported it, we're doing something right because people are not testing positive. So, you know what I'm saying? I applaud the NBA. Let's keep it rolling. Let's hope we can keep this up so we, everybody can get rid of masks and everybody get rid of go do however they want to do it so we can get this thing back open so fans can stop acting a, a plum fool. I mean, they're going to act a fool, but a plum fool. That maybe they'll tone it down a little bit. Last one, tomorrow night, game six in Portland with the with the Nuggets up 3-2 in the series. Who do you got, Jay? Blazers, they're going to send this one to a game seven. I got I got to I got to stick with them. I think they can I think they can send this one to, to seven. Um, Damian Lillard's not done. I think he gets helped uh, in Portland tomorrow, and uh, we'll have a seventh game in this series. And that concludes tonight's Drink of Wisdom. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like, listen, share, subscribe. We appreciate it all. I'm Jay Watts. And I'm Nate the Drinker. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby.